Here we will explore true facts about the octopus. Deep in the depths of the ocean lives a marvelous creature sometimes referred to as the floppy floppy spider of the sea. But its true name comes from a Greek word meaning eight-footed because it has eight arms. There are two major suborders of octopuses, the Serena and Inserina. The serrate octopuses look a bit like an alien got freaky with a weather balloon. They have two little fins, a small internal shell, and lots of little cilia next to their suckers. The other suborder, which we will be looking at today, are the inserina. No internal shell, although some do try to fake it. No fins, but 100% amazing. Many of you will know the amazing color and texture changing capabilities of the octopus as well as its ability to fart ink at a moment's notice, evolution at its finest. However, perhaps the most remarkable feature of the octopus is its intelligence. They are the most intelligent of all of the invertebrates. Technically not tons of competition there. I mean, clams are stupid. I'm sorry I said it, but they are dumb as hell. What is amazing is that while octopuses can learn and remember complex tasks like opening childproof jars and moving through mazes, they are using an intelligence that has evolved very differently than our own. Unlike our intelligence, which is mainly centralized in our head hole, the octopus has distributed intelligence. Three-fifths of all of its neurons are located in its arms. In a way, each of its arms actually has a mind of its own which is amazing. Unless, after a while you found out that one of your arms was an asshole, that would suck. These arms are so capable that even when they are severed, they will continue to search for and capture food, and then try to bring that food back to a non-existent mouth hole. Some octopuses will actually remove one of their own arms when threatened and let it wriggle away to confuse the hell out of predators. Data point of one, but it would confuse the hell out of me. Each arm of the octopus is equipped with over 250 suction cups, each one with the ability to rotate and grasp independently. Not only are they grabby-grabby, but the suction cups contain sensory receptors, which allow it to taste and smell what it touches. This is an ability I'm glad I don't have. It is widely known that the interestingness of an animal is proportional to how difficult it is to figure out where its butthole is. The octopus is therefore very interesting, because its mouth is exactly where I thought its butt should be. I'll be honest with you, I still don't really know where it is. But my search history does contain the phrase, pictures of an octopus's butt. <laughs> Inside the octopus's mouth is a beak, the only hard part of the inserina body, meaning that the octopus can squeeze through any hole larger than its beak. The tentacles guide food towards the beak, where venomous saliva incapacitates prey before the horror begins. I told you, clams are stupid. When it comes to moving, the octopus has a variety of options. It can crawl, or use a water jet called a siphon, or it, it can do this, which is my favorite. Some scientists have argued that two of its arms should be characterized as legs. I wonder why. <laughs> they can walk. <laughs> Octopuses can even move on land quite effectively. Yes, they get a little mushy on land, but don't judge. It's like reverse shrinkage. Imagine what they think when we skinny dip. What happened to your little arm? That's what they say. Although the octopus's eight arms may seem identical, one of the male's arms is actually a hectocotylus, which functions like a penis. Therefore, shaking hands with a male octopus is sort of like playing Russian roulette. But instead of dying, you risk your hand getting pregnant. The hectocotylus is used to transfer spermatophores to the female, either by inserting it into a hole in her mantle, or by tearing it off and presenting it to the female for later use. To understand this, imagine if you were on a date, and your date reached down and... well... That is how an octopus do. To the octopus, human sex looks really, really boring. Like we're just saying hello to each other. Because when they get it on, it can get crazy. When the female has fertilized her eggs, she retreats to an underwater crevice and attaches her eggs to the roof. 
She will stay with them, gently blowing fresh water over them, protecting them as she slowly starves to death. Basically, everything they do is hardcore. When her job is done, she is gone, but thousands of little babies emerge, floating. Just beautiful. Sort of like the ending of Charlotte's Web, except underwater. And without the farm animals, too, they would, they would all drown. They would die. The dancing pig wouldn't last a second, really. It'd be sort of uh, babies interspersed with these dead and rotting animals being eaten by fish. It's, it's a different story, really. Less appropriate for children. And I, the duck would do okay, but one floating duck does not a children's book make, you know. Just remember, if you're writing a children's book, one animal can die, not all of them. Only a clam would write that sort of crap, and they're dumb as hell. Thank <laughs> you.